Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I am going to talk you through some books that you might like if you enjoy Jane Austen and her time period. Now, as I've said before, I have a playlist all about Jane Austen where I have several specific videos about books that I own, both fiction and nonfiction, that are specifically about Jane Austen, either her work or her times. So you can go and check those out if you're looking for something that specific. In this video, I will be recommending books that are either Georgian or Regency, but that do not necessarily have to do with Jane Austen. So to start with, in fiction, I cannot stop going on about these books, and that is the Bloody Jack series by L.A. Meyer. This is a series that I loved throughout high school and college, and I still think is just fantastic. The story starts in 1801, when we meet 11-year-old Mary Faber, who is an orphan living on the streets of London, and she decides, in order to make a better life for herself, she is going to dress herself up as the boy Jackie Faber, and get herself a job as a cabin boy on a naval ship. However, as she begins to work on this naval ship, not only does it become harder and harder to conceal the fact that she is a girl, but she starts to develop feelings for one of her fellow cabin boys. She goes on to have so many adventures, and you watch her grow up from 11 until she is at least 18, possibly into her 20s, there are about 13 books in this series, and I loved each and every one of them. Next, if you are looking for something on the lighter side, more in tune with Jane Austen's romances, I would recommend Mr. Malcolm's List by Suzanne Allen or Elaine. I'm still not sure how to pronounce her last name. This is a book I hadn't heard of until I saw the first 10 minutes of a potential film adaptation, which is available on YouTube, and it is a fantastic adaptation. I think I might like it even better than the book, if I'm honest. The creation of the film had to be put on hold due to the 2020 pandemic, but hopefully production picks back up soon, because I cannot wait to see the rest of it. In the meantime, however, I read the novel which is about the Honorable Mr. Malcolm, who is the most eligible bachelor in certainly London society, if not all of Regency society. However, no woman ever seems to measure up to his high standards. And as one young woman finds out, it seems he has a list of qualifications that his bride must meet. This latest girl that he has rejected, however, is furious that she does not measure up. So she calls in her friend Selena as an unwitting bait to see if she can give Mr. Malcolm a dose of his own medicine. However, as fate would have it, Selena and Mr. Malcolm begin to fall for one another. And many twists and turns later, it is quite a light, lovely romance. I did have problems with a few aspects of it, and if you want to know more, you can see my August wrap-up from last year. Also in the light romance vein, I would recommend Most Things by Georgette Heyer, specifically Venetia. Venetia is my favorite Georgette Heyer novel of all time. Admittedly, I haven't read very many. And admittedly, I haven't read the full novel. I read the audiobook narrated by Richard Armitage. However, when I was halfway through listening to that audiobook, I discovered that it is abridged. Usually, I try and stay away from abridged productions, but I was halfway through it and it is Richard Armitage. So I continued, and honestly, the characters are still fully rounded and the plot still flows beautifully and makes perfect sense. I don't think there's anything wrong with the abridged production, but you can read the full novel if you would like to as well. It follows Venetia Lanyon, who is the middle child. Her older brother Conway is away fighting in the Napoleonic Wars, and her younger brother Aubrey 
hopes to go off to university at some point. However, he does have a disability which causes him a lot of chronic pain, so he's trying to navigate all of that. So Venetia is essentially in charge. Their father has died. And things kick off for Venetia when the rakish, not just rakish, he is a notorious rake, Lord Damerel moves back into the manor next door. I love the relationship between Venetia and Lord Damerel. It is smart, it is sweet, it is witty. I almost don't have the words to say how much I enjoyed this novel. I would also recommend anything by Julianne Donaldson. This is the novel Blackmore, however her novel Edenbrook is just as famous. This novel tells the story of Kate Worthington, who does not want to marry. She has no intention of marrying. She wants to travel to India and make a new life for herself there as an independent woman. Her family is quite insistent that this is not a good idea, so she strikes a deal with her mother. She can go to India after she has rejected three marriage proposals. So Kate enlists the help of her childhood friend Henry Delafield to propose to her three times so she can reject him and go to India. However, he has conditions of his own and complications ensue. I read this straight through in one or two days. I remember sobbing at the end of it. It handles all the complexities of Henry and Kate's relationship beautifully. I just loved it. And I remember enjoying Edenbrook as well, but as it's not one I own, I don't feel as familiar to explain its plot to you. If you can hear a truck idling outside, I am terribly sorry, but I'm just gonna have to carry on. If you're looking for romances with a bit of action as well, then I will recommend first the Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orsi. Yes, I know this is sometimes considered a classic, but since it was written as historical fiction, I'm including it here. This takes place in the 1790s and is the story of a mysterious superhero who helps French nobles escape the guillotine and always leaves his calling card of a small red flower known as a Scarlet Pimpernel. And it is also the story of Lady Blakeney, who is caught in rather a triangle between her rather foppish husband and the French ambassador, Monsieur Chauvelin. And they all get caught up in the Scarlet Pimpernel's schemes, full of romance and adventure. If you haven't read it yet, I would highly recommend it. I, of course, can't mention Regency set historical fiction without mentioning the Poldark series by Winston Graham. Yes, the television series is wonderful and I highly recommend it, but I also highly recommend the books. They are thrilling and utterly engrossing and there are lots of them to keep you satisfied. They tell the story of Captain Ross Poldark, who comes back from fighting in the American Revolution to discover that his family home in Cornwall has fallen to ruins, his father has died, and his sweetheart Elizabeth is now engaged to his cousin. And he has to start an entirely new life for himself from there. These run from the 1780s all the way through the 1810s, so they perfectly encompass Jane Austen's time period. And even if you have seen the television series, I would highly recommend that you read the books, especially from book eight onwards, as book eight onwards diverges quite a bit from series five of the television series. If you are looking for some gritty um, literary fiction, I would recommend first The Fair Fight by Anna Freeman, which is the story of three different people. Ruth Weber trying to literally fight her way out of life in a brothel by becoming a wonderful boxer. Lady Charlotte Sinclair, who feels trapped in her life, and George Bowden, who is also trapped in his, and somehow Ruth's success as a boxer 
is seen as all of their tickets out. This is definitely set more in the 1700s than the 1800s, but that is still Georgian, so this still counts. I would also recommend The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogen Hermes or Hermes Gower, which is the story of Jonah Hancock, who is a shipping merchant in the 1780s, and one day the captain of one of his ships comes back to him to tell him that he has sold Jonah's ship for a mermaid. And Jonah is left with this mermaid, which then brings him into all different pockets of society that he never expected to go. It is beautiful and dark and intriguing, dare I say slightly magically real, and utterly fascinating. If you're more a mystery sort of person, then I would recommend the Dido Kent series of mysteries, which begins with Belfield Hall, and those are written by Anna Dean. There are four books in the series so far, I believe. I've only read the first two. I'm on the lookout for book three. This is the story of Dido Kent, a single woman and aunt to a lovely young woman, and she is called in when Catherine's fiancé suddenly breaks off his engagement to her without an explanation and disappears. As Dido arrives to try and figure out what on earth has happened to Catherine's fiancé, the murdered body of another young woman also shows up on the property. And it's Dido's job to try and figure out what is going on and are these two events somehow related. I really enjoyed the first two mysteries that I read of these. They're very gentle, but that doesn't make them cutesy or uninteresting, so I would highly recommend them. Next, if you're looking for a little bit of fantasy, I have two recommendations. The first is Sorcery and Cecilia, or The Enchanted Chocolate Pot, by Patricia C. Reed and Caroline Stervermer. This is, in fact, the beginning of a trilogy, and these are definitely middle grade to YA sorts of books, but I loved them. I read the first two when I was 13, but I read the third one when I was 25 and loved it just as much. These are told in epistolary format, and indeed, each one of the authors took on the persona of our two main characters, Cecilia and Kate, and wrote letters to each other to create this novel in the first place. This is a Regency London where magic is also relatively common, certainly more common than it actually was. And Kate and Cecilia are not only learning to use their magic, but they are also trying to find their lost brother Oliver, who has somehow been transformed into a tree and navigate the Regency marriage market. There is a whimsical charm and humor to these, as well as being a wonderful Regency tale. So I would highly recommend this series. And I can't mention Regency and magic without mentioning Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. This is a fantastic book. Do not be intimidated by its size. I always like to describe this book as if Jane Austen and Neil Gaiman wrote a book together. It has a perfect Regency style, but again with that whimsical sense of humor that you would typically find in a Neil Gaiman fantasy story. If you're not familiar with it, it's the story of a Regency England that is slightly different from the one we know where magic used to be quite common. However, at the point when we enter the story, magicians are really just historians of magic. Any self-respecting gentleman does not perform magic himself. However, one day news reaches the Society of Magicians that there is a man, Mr. Norrell, in York, who is performing practical magic and this changes everything. He is launched into the spotlight, he is used in the king's attempts to foil Napoleon, and in addition takes on the protege of Jonathan Strange, who also discovers that he is a practical magician. 
Meanwhile, there are all sorts of other plots afoot, and they all come to a head. The characters are so fully drawn, and the plot is so engrossing that you will fly through this huge book. And I will also say that the television series made a few years ago does the book justice. I really enjoyed it. And finally, if you are looking for the truly bizarre, I would recommend Bloodlust and Bonnets by Emily McGovern. This does take place slightly later than the Regency. It's definitely early Victorian, but it still harkens back to many of the tropes that we love from Regency fiction as well as the Brontes. This is the story of a lovely trio, Lucy, the clueless debutante, the ruthless bounty hunter Sham, and Lord Byron as they ramble through the country searching for love and hunting down a few vampires while they're at it. The humor is spot on. I laughed all the way through this graphic novel. The art style is beautiful and all of its lampooning is done with the utmost love. This is also by the same author of the My Life as a Background Slytherin comic series, which is also fantastic. So I know I said that this was going to include both fiction and nonfiction, however, I have gone on for long enough about fiction. I will be including a separate video about the nonfiction that I would recommend very shortly. Until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.